Hi, I'm Christian Chiller, and in this video, I'm going to look at how I digitized PDFs of musical scores. Why did I want to do this? Well, I've for a little while been practicing drums quite a lot and getting back into making music again. And especially when I am thinking of patterns for the drums and practicing and creating songs, I like to think I've got used to thinking of the drums in terms of musical notation because I can see the values of the notes and I can think about how it will sound quite easily. I have been taking a course for some time and the tutor of that course always provides practice scores in PDFs, but sometimes provides nothing. And I wanted to fill in those gaps and create my own scores, but equally I wanted to take some of the pieces I practiced with and maybe turn them into a song, mess with them, put them into Ableton, something like that. So I wanted to be able to take those PDFs and turn them in to other things, fundamentally MIDI in the long run. I also wanted something that would enable me to do this on iPad and Mac OS and keep it in sync. And even more ideally, the ability to use the Apple Pencil to sort of more naturally write notations or write annotations on notations and that kind of thing. There are a lot of well-established older players in this space, and I'm going to detail the entire process and all the applications I looked at in the blog post version of this, but I won't do that in this video. But suffice it to say, I did look at Sibelius, I looked at Finale, I looked at Notion, and many, many others trying to find something that worked for me. And generally, I found that they were either very expensive and I couldn't try them, the trials didn't work, or they were just not very good, or they didn't sync, or they didn't have Mac versions, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally, I hit upon a combination of two applications that did just what I wanted. And this is what I found. First, I discovered, or to be clear, I rediscovered because I dismissed it in the past and then came across it again in, a, in someone else's blog post, something called Music. It's primarily an application for practice and it has an iPad and a Mac version, and I will show both here, that lets you import PDFs, most crucially, annotate them, add them to set lists, listen back to them, that kind of thing. But most importantly for me, it has a feature called Live score. This is the music web app interface, which is primarily designed for creating pieces and set lists and shareable projects, amongst others, for practicing. So you kind of build your pieces and your set list and you share them through projects with other people. And I'll import a file first. I'll import a PDF. It is yellow by Coldplay. It's a very good drumming practice song. And when that's done, we'll see the PDF represented here. So I could just add this to pieces and set list and create notes and bookmarks and all this sort of stuff. But what I actually want to do is create a live score first. And that will take a little bit of time and we'll come back when it's done. Before I dive into the live score magic, you can also add YouTube videos. So this is the play along YouTube video that I used to practice the track with. So I'm gonna add it here. Let's copy the URL, add it to the score. And then I can have that play as I play along with the score, which is kind of cool. You'll notice here there's various instruments we can use. And this is where it's problematic for my drumming practice because there is no drum kit. If music ever added that, then I'd find it more useful because for the time being, this is where the feature set is not so useful for me. Just out of pure interest, I'll add like a solo percussion instrument here, play it back. I mean, <laughs> it works, but it's not ideal. It doesn't play uh, multiple drums at once or anything like that. So it's not so useful. So what do we do to make it more useful? You can also see there's different ways to present the score. And if you want to practice along, if the instrument worked for you, 
setting the time, the time signature, that kind of thing. I just wish I could use it. Well, we can export as another PDF or Music XML, which is a cool kind of standard for sharing musical notation. And let's just use it in other applications. So far, so good. I now have a Music XML file. I have a place for my kind of practice pieces, if there was a drum sound, of course. But there we go, maybe in the future. Now I would like something where I can actually get the MIDI, I can create from scratch, I can change the score, that kind of thing, and then take it further if I want to. And for this, I ended up turning to Dorico from Steinberg. It can be a very expensive application and it has desktop and iPad versions, but for my purposes, the free version is actually fine because a drum kit is just one instrument. And most of the time for these co big commercial applications, they look at the number of instruments and I only need one. So all I need to do is open up that music XML file, which I downloaded, give it a moment, and it converts it to an interactive score here. And if I click around, you'll see these are actually real notes. It's not a PDF. And this is actually perfectly accurate. It's got all the instruments in the right place and it has the proper percussion stave there. And if I hit play, this is how it should sound. And we can see the, the progression line moving along. Brilliant. We can also do this from uh, MIDI playback. Here we go. Yeah, same thing. And of course with MIDI, we can do all sorts of other things. If we wanted to export as another PDF, there's also that option, but this is basically what I want. I will save it to iCloud because you can synchronize with iPad version, which I'll show you later. Save that as a Dorico project and we're good to go. So I mentioned the potential of MIDI. Let's export this as MIDI. And yes, we just want, the, I mean, there's only one part here. Keep it where it is. That's great. That is iCloud, <laughs> just does these weird paths. So now I have MIDI, and now I can do all sorts of things with MIDI. I'm going to look specifically at taking it into Ableton, but of course it could be anything else, including, including Cubase, which is also made by Steinberg, and they have much more direct uh, connections between the two, unsurprisingly, but I will look at Ableton. So now I have the MIDI file. We can import that into all sorts of things. I'm going to use Ableton. I'll import the file. And there shouldn't be no real surprises here. We will need to set a drum instrument. So I'll just set a drum kit. Any drum kit will really do. Hit play. And there we go. Same again. I also like the fact that somehow it's introduced kind of random velocity to make it sound more natural. I don't even know how that got there, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> Now, I mentioned at the beginning, I wanted something that also worked on iPad and both Music and Dorico have iPad applications and here they are. So here is the Music iPad application. It looks mostly the same. We have the scores I previously created here. Settings are in different places. Some different options as well, actually. Uh, some better, to be honest with you, than on the web version. You can also do things like make annotations, make notes to yourself. I haven't really done that on this score, but there's some other scores where I definitely do do that quite a lot. There you go, you can see, you could probably use Apple Pencil as well. And it syncs, as you see there. You can also play it back, again, with the wrong instrument. <laughs> it's kind of weird. 
go. Uh, I can also switch into a set list and maybe create my drum practice set list series of things that I always like to try and practice every time I get in the studio. Um, doesn't look that much different from my non-set list list, of course. If I wanted to import and convert the PDF in the app, I can also do that from various storage suppliers on iPadOS. So here's a, a new version by the famous Hotplay, their version of Yellow. Obviously it's the same score, but uh, just quicker. And I can also create a live score from here. You can see the wording is a little different in this case, but uh, yeah, it's slightly confusing in some respects. And there it goes. And when it's done, we'd have basically the, the same. The same basically applies for Dorico. In fact, it looks almost identical. It can load in the file from iCloud, play it back. There we go, as expected. Pretty much the same. And also from the MIDI view. There we go. And of course, I could also use Dorico for my playlists, for my rehearsals, etc., etc. I could use either application to do that. And that was how I digitized some PDFs to get Music XML. MIDI, basically just a flexible back and forth chain between musical notation as PDF or even as a paper file into music XML, MIDI into a door, back and forth, the ability to actually finally have that flexibility I was looking for the whole time. And this was through a combination of two applications, Music and Dorico. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. It took me quite some time to put all these pieces together. So I hope you also find it useful. If you enjoyed what you saw, then please subscribe, leave a comment, please share. And as always, you can find much more about me at christianchola.com. Thank you very much for joining me and take care everybody.